So we're talking about uh, the various X-rays uh, or the images that are relevant in GIT. Uh, the first one is the lateral view uh, of the Zenker's diverticulum. The finding that you can see, it is called as the pouch filled barium. It is the pouch filled barium. So the pouch appearance, you can see across it, right? Now, we all know Zenker's diverticulum is an acquired diverticulum. It's a false diverticulum, right? Now, it is the protrusion through the Killian's dacis, that is between the thyropharynges and the cricopharynges. Thyropharynges, it is the oblique muscle that is present. It is the oblique muscle that is present. Cricopharynges is the transverse muscle. Right. Now, see, there are other diverticulums of the esophagus also. Zenker's diverticulum, it occurs on the left side. It's the left-sided diverticulum. But when you compare the other ones at the mid-esophageal diverticulum, the epiphrenic diverticulum, they're left, they're right-sided, right? This is left-sided. <coughs> Those two are right-sided. Now, Zenker's is associated with the narrow mouth. It is associated with narrow mouth, that is a small opening or the small mouth that is present. Whereas the mid esophageal and the epiphrenic diverticulum, they are having wide mouth opening, right? Zenkers is also an example of a false diverticulum. It is also an example of a false diverticulum, right? That is about your Zenkers diverticulum. <clears throat> now, in terms of <coughs> Oh, sorry. In the tracheoesophageal fistula. Now, how what is the most characteristic finding? You can see <clears throat> you can see the Ryles tube is getting stuck there and it just coils across. So the usual objective is the nasogastric tube is going to be stuck at 10 centimeters from the incisors from the esophagus, right? If you push more, it can coil also. The coiling of nasogastric tube is also noticed, right? Now, most common type is the type C variety, right? Now, <clears throat> in the nasogastric tube next day, tube stops at 10 centimeter mark. The safest contrast that you can give in these baby is your iohexol. The treatment, we've been telling you that it depends it depends upon whether it's a short distance or a long distance one, right? If it is, <laughs> sorry. If it is a short distance atresia or a long distance atresia, the criteria for short distance, less than two vertebral distance, long is more than two vertebral distance. More than two vertebral distance. If it is a short distance atresia, then you'll go with resection and anastomosis. That is, you do a resection of the fistula and anastomosis. That is primary anastomosis. For long distance, as we have discussed earlier, I would do a fistulectomy with feeding jejunostomy. With feeding jejunostomy is performed. Right? And then after six months, if it grows, if the length increases, we're going to resect an anastomosis or a primary anastomosis can be done. After six months, if the length is adequate, then you can go with anastomosis. If it is inadequate length, then you have to go with transposition or interposition surgery. Interposition surgery can be performed. Right now, we talk about the conduit. Most common conduit. Most common conduit in children for esophagus is going to be jejunum. If they say ideal, that is colon. It is the left colon that is preferred over right colon. 
most common conduit for esophagus in adult so in adult we will be doing for cancer no so here it is going to be stomach hmm. here we are going to do it for stomach now <clears throat> esophageal web that you can see is your plumber vincent syndrome or the patterson brown kelly syndrome right now what you see the esophageal web in the plumber vincent syndrome it is an upper esophageal web it is a upper esophageal web because the lower esophageal web will be seen in Schatzky's ring, right? So this is your upper esophageal web. Now component of the plumber vincent syndrome that you will see, there's an iron deficiency anemia. There is atrophiglossitis. It is atrophic glossitis. <clears throat> there is koinonchia. There is upper esophageal web. There is an upper esophageal web and associated with the visceromegaly. It is associated with visceromegaly. Most common conduit in adults for esophagus is stomach. Yeah. Now you can see the esophageal ring that is present in the lower part. It is your Schatzky's ring. Schatzky's is a symmetrical mucosal thickening. It's a symmetrical mucosal thickening. I hope you are able to appreciate from both ends. You can see this is symmetrical thickening on either end. It is seen in the lower esophagus. It is seen in the lower esophagus. It is associated with GRD as well. It is associated with GRD as well. And it is, it may <laughs> cause the steak house syndrome. Right? Sure. Aclasia cardia, uh, you will see there is a bird beak sign. <clears throat> as you can see characteristically here. If I just put an eye here, it looks like a bird, right? It's a bird beak sign. You can see this soft tapering, which is present here, right? The other names that are used here for Aclasia cardia, they're called as the bird beak sign. They're also called as the pencil tip sign. They're also referred to as the rat tail sign. They're also referred to as the rat sail sign. Now, one of the most characteristic feature of Aclasia cardia is going to be dysphagia. Now, three important points about dysphagia and Aclasia cardia. Now, here the dysphagia will be for both solids and liquids. But more importantly, the dysphagia will be more for liquids when compared to solids and it will be a progressive dysphagia. It will be a progressive dysphagia. Now, remember the investigation of choice is going to be manometry for Ecclesia Cardia and more importantly, the IRP that is integrated relaxation pressure should be more than 15 millimeters of mercury in order to call it as an Ecclesia Cardia, right? Now, management for Ecclesia Cardia, the first line is always a conservative management. So you give calcium channel blockers and nitrates and all that. Uh, we can also give botulinum toxin. But if it fails, then the surgery of choice is going to be the Heller's myotomy. It is the Heller's myotomy. Another uh, image that you can see, I hope everybody is able to comprehend well, it looks like a corkscrew, right? So corkscrew is a characteristic presentation of diffuse esophageal spasm. The other terms that are used, this is also called or referred to as pseudo diverticulum. This is also referred to as pseudo diverticulum. 
also referred to as the rosary bed appearance also referred to as the rosary bed appearance pseudo diverticulum and beaded appearance also referred to as the beaded appearance right now we have sliding and the rolling heart as hernias right sliding is more common when compared to rolling right sliding it is associated with the grd right now the surgery for the heart as hernia that is fundal plication with allison's repair when i say the allison repair it is called as cruroplasty also referred to as gastropexy it is the fixation of the stomach to the crust of the diaphragm it is called as the cruroraphy right <clears throat> Now, these are the images that you will see in the sliding and the rolling heart hernia. In the sliding heart hernia, you can see the gastroesophageal junction, right? This is the gastroesophageal junction that is drifting up. Whereas in rolling heart hernia, you see that it is rolled out into the thoracic segment, right? Now, one of the important aspects of the heart as hernia's X-ray will be presence of retrocardiac air fluid level. You can see if this is the cardiac shadow and you see a retro cardiac air fluid shadow, right? This is a characteristic of heart as hernia, right? <clears throat> so, so this is with respect to heart as hernia. So for any questions, guys, quick feedback. Quick feedback. The chat box is accessed. One second. Quick feedback, guys. Somebody's esophageal ring. One sec. Take down if you've not taken on. Quick feedback. Quick feedback. All good. Okay, so continuing, we have the double barrel esophagus. Uh, where do you see double barrel esophagus? Anybody? You can see that one barrel is here, another barrel is here, right? A uh, double barrel esophagus. But a rat tail can be seen in esophageal cancer also. Double barrel esophagus, anybody? It is seen in intramural esophageal dissection. In intramural esophageal dissection. It is an intramural esophageal dissection. An intramural esophageal dissection. Right? Okay. In which condition would you see this? Somebody has written correct. It is seen in aortic dissections. Okay. Chal. <clears throat> But Allison's repair is nothing but cruroraphy. That is based. See, uh, it's it's a version of gastropexy where you fix the fundus of the stomach to the crust of the diaphragm. That's it. Feline esophagus is what we see in GRD and eosinophilic esophagitis. Two important questions. In feline esophagus, you can see it's also called as stacked mucosal rings. The other name, if you see the image very carefully, you see these are these mucosal rings which are present across here. So feline esophagus is also referred to as the stacked mucosal rings. 
they're also associated with the stark mucosal rings right so foreign body in the esophagus uh, you can see usually when you talk about the foreign bodies there could be coins or batteries batteries has to be removed as early as possible coin if there's no distress you can wait and watch allow it to pass okay so now <clears throat> Remember, button batteries and coins in the esophagus, button fibers have double ring sign. That is what you have to see. This is your double ring sign for battery. This is coin. It will have a double ring sign for batteries. Now, in stomach, you have CHPS, congenital hypertrophic pyloxenosis, more common in males, firstborn male child. Projectile vomiting, which is going to be non bilious, usually single best answer of the age of presentation is going to be fourth week, right? Now, <clears throat> one of the most important aspects is the electrolyte imbalance that you will see. The electrolyte imbalance, I'm going to write it here. The electrolyte imbalance. See, what is inscribed? All these are guys. <clears throat> they are for residencies. It is very unlikely that they'll ask you in an undergraduate exam. If you have read it, it's okay, but it's not important for the exam point of view. So whatever we're concentrating now is what is your exam takeaway. So please concentrate on that. Now in an electrolyte imbalance of CH phase, what is going to happen? Repeated vomiting. Vomiting means what? There'll be water loss. Wherever water goes, sodium follows. Along with that, <coughs> the gastric content that is hydrochloric acid is lost. So when you look in terms of elements, we are losing a lot of protons because metabolic <laughs> alkalosis. Chlorine is lost, so there'll be hypochloremia. There'll be hypochloremia. Now, in order to preserve sodium, because sodium is the most cherished element, RAS system will kick in to retain water. <clears throat> in order to do that, it will start losing potassium. So hypokalemia. Along with that, the protons in the urine will lose. This will result in paradoxical aciduria. It will result in paradoxical aciduria. Right? This is the electron imbalance that you have to remember. I told you electron imbalance in refeeding syndrome. Now the electron imbalance in CHPS. Both of them are important. There is no features of PEM that is that is malnutrition or no polyhydramnos. Investigation of ultrasound. Ultrasound, you will see presence of double track sign. The criteria <clears throat> on a double track sign. Huh. Hyponatremia is in a late feature. One second, sorry. Huh. CHP is a congenital hypertrophic pyloroxtenosis. Now, if the length is greater than 16 millimeters, uh, thickness more than 4 millimeters, and width more than 4 millimeters, it is considered to be as CHBS, right? So, on an ultrasound, what do you see? A target sign, an antral nipple sign, or the cervix sign, right? So, these are the signs that you see on CHBS. Okay. On a barium swallow, you will see the string sign, the double track sign, and the caterpillar sign. We already spoken about the electrolyte imbalance. Resuscitation that you will see associated with this. This is important criteria. We'll use half normal saline with KCL and 2.5% dextrose or ringer lactate can be used. For surgery, <clears throat> surgery is done when the urine output is more than 1 ml per kg per hour and the bicarbonate is less than 30 milli equal. This is the criteria for surgery. The surgery of choice is your Ramstead's pyloromyotomy. Right? You can attempt a balloon dilatation, but even today, the surgery of choice is going to be Ramstead's pyloromyotomy. Nothing spectacular about it. Okay? Now, in perforation peritonitis or hollow viscous perforation, they are associated with the peptic ulcer disease. They're more common with duodenal ulcers when compared to gastric ulcers. <clears throat> now, you can see a classical in a hollow viscous perforation. Huh? This is, so you can see this is the liver shadow. This is the diaphragm. And between the liver and the diaphragm, this is where the air is present. Huh? So this is described as free 
this is what we call it as the free right sided gas under diaphragm. It will also be associated with a football sign. The whole abdomen will become distended and look like a football sign. Right? So same variants of the air under diaphragm, which you can see across here. <clears throat> Another one, that is the dome sign or the regular sign that you can see, right? In the nemoperitoneum. Regular striad is important. Uh, regular striad is seen in gallstone ileus, right? What are the regular striad? In the regular striad, the patient will present to you with small bowel dynamic obstruction, small intestinal dynamic obstruction, along with small intestinal dynamic obstruction, you will see there is presence of nemobilia, that is air in the biliary system. And then with nemobilia, there's presence of ectopic gallstones. So in the image, no, I've marked it as A, B, C, right? Now, A is your ectopic gallstone, right? Dynamic bowel obstruction is the B that you see. Nemobilia is C that you see across. <clears throat> right? So this is your regular triad. Another image that you will see across here is your double bubble sign that is seen in three important components, duodenal atresia, annular pancreas, and lads band, right? This is your double bubble sign. Now, double bubble sign, this is a supine view. If you see in an erect view, in an erect view, <laughs> the most common atresia in GIT, the overall most common atresia in GIT, it is the jejunal atresia when compared to diordinal atresia, right? Now they're usually associated with bilious vomiting. It is also associated with Down syndrome and polyhydromas, right? Now, obviously X-ray, when you do for the jejunal atresia, for diordinal, it is double bubble. For jejunal atresia, for jejunal atresia, you will get triple bubble sign. If it is for duodenal atresia, the management is duodenodudenostomy, right? For jejunal atresia, it's a jejunodudenostomy. It is a jejunodudenostomy. Okay, in the mal rotations, again important, the normal rotation of bowel is at 270 degrees. The midgut rotates outwards and then comes back in 270 degrees. Now, in a non rotation, where will you have the cecum? In a, see, lads band is a band that's basically a hepato <clears throat> diurnal ligament, but that band will now go over the intestine in a non-rotation. That's called as large band. In non-rotation, non the cecum is at where? Right or left? It is present on the left. Right? The main presentation is of obstruction. That is because of risk for strangulation. There is increased risk for strangulation there is increased risk for strangulation. In an incomplete rotation, where do you have the cecum? Now, in an incomplete rotation, can anybody tell me where do you have the cecum in an incomplete rotation? Quick feedback. Incomplete rotation, where do you find the cecum's position? Very good. It is in the subpyloric region, right? In an incomplete rotation, It is in the subpyloric region.
Now in this incomplete rotation, again, it usually presents with, it presents with the obstructive features. After complete rotation and the non-fixation of cecum, the patient may develop. What can they develop? They can develop strangulation. Hence, it has to be fixed. <clears throat> okay. Okay, whirlpool sign on a CT. Whirlpool sign on a CT. Where do you see guys, whirlpool sign on a CT? You can see here, whirlpool sign, whirlpool sign, it is seen in, it is seen in small intestinal volvulus. It is seen in a small intestinal volvulus. Rotation is always anti-clockwise. Rotation is always anti-clockwise. 270 degrees anti-clockwise rotation. <clears throat> Chalo. So in a small intestinal, this is the small intestinal obstruction on x-ray. You will see presence of multiple air fluid levels. The presence of multiple air fluid levels. There should be a minimum of more than three air fluid levels. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six, right? You can see multiple air fluid levels indicating small bowel obstruction. In large bowel obstruction, you see massive colonic distension. There's a massive colonic distension you can see in the large bowel obstruction. So this is a large bowel obstruction. Remember, large bowel obstructions are closed loop obstructions. They are always of surgical emergency, right? Now, <clears throat> in a intestinal obstruction, the air fluid levels, no, you can see in a step ladder pattern in small intestine. In a step ladder pattern. You see a step ladder, like a step it is present of a ladder, right? You can just walk down from here, then you go here, 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 and then you go. It's a step ladder pattern, right? Whereas you have a uniform or same planar, usually on the periphery. <clears throat> step ladder pattern, it will be more central in position. This will be more peripheral in position. See the difference between jejunum and ileum. In jejunum, you will see these bands, these are valvulae in conventi, right? Whereas in ileum, you will not have presence of valvulae in conventi. Those are the differences that you need to know, right? So this is your valvulae in conventi called as the plica circularis, right? Ogleaf syndrome is called as the colonic pseudo obstruction, right? It's a non-mechanical massive dilatation of the colon. It is the sympathetic overactivity. There's increase in sympathetic activity and suppressed parasympathetic activity that you will see. The X-ray will show you massive distension. There will be presence of massive distension of the large ball. One second. Treatment is injection that's drug of choice is going to be neostigmine. It resolves, right? Microcolon, it is seen in obstruction with small bowels like jejunal or ileal atresias. It is seen with colonic agangliosis, that is Zula Wilson syndrome, and meconium ileus, which is the most important of all, right? Now, Rapunzel syndrome is seen in trichobase. You have psychiatric disorder of trichot trichotillomania where patient consumes it. Take that is a Rapunzel syndrome. 
thumbprint sign as you can see here it is seen in ischemic colitis right you can see the presence of thumb print that you can see in this manner you hear the thumb that is being asserted right so you can see a thumbprint sign